Welcome to GM Tips. I'm your host, Satin Phoenix, co-creator of Maze Arcana and Dungeon Master of Savage Nation. Today's GM Tips is about character investment entitled Player Buy-In. A character's backstory is necessary to give them reasons for taking certain actions. They are more than just numbers on a page. Having been attacked by a swarm of snakes might make them reluctant to repeat that scenario. They have relationships, nemeses, and favorite uncles, and some Mr. Old Cat that is now taken care of by their sister back home. Your players spend incredible amounts of time building their backstory. It can be valuable as a game master to incorporate this in the game. GM tip number one, pick a leader. You can create a story that places one of the characters as the decision maker by having them hire the group to fulfill their quest. Bam! Instant investment. The players naturally follow the lead of this character, allowing more movement in your game versus long arguments on where to go next. They can be promised gold, treasure, titles, the opportunity for more work. As a game master, you can ask the other players what their characters would want in return and shape the incentives around their needs. By automatically having a leader who hires the group, the true leader of the group might reveal themselves, questioning why have they been sent on the quest in the first place. A team's inner conflict doesn't have to stunt the group, but encourages the players to explore the nature of the characters they play. GM tip number two, friends forever. Often, I start my games with the characters already knowing each other. Three years is my favorite span of time. It's enough time to have learned one another, having seen each other at their best and their worst. They fought in a war together. Maybe they went to the same spy school, endured a life-changing experience together. Depending on the story and what kinds of characters they make, I'll ask them to describe something about the event that they remember vividly. Then, I'll ask them to explain how they failed. Most groups become more interactive during the failure explanation and enjoy blaming each other through the game about these old grudges. GM tip number three characters in their world. Another way to get players more invested in the story is to create opportunities for their characters' individual stories to affect the world. The group might enter a shop. Perhaps a sneaky character or those of a certain faction might interact with a stranger who can be directly linked to someone in their past. Maybe a cat that passes looks just like the childhood cat of the warlock in the group, reminding them of a sacrifice they had to make to their patron. Tidbits like this ground the characters into the world. They all have a before, now, and future. I could roll on about this, but instead, let's discuss this with the creator of Eberron, Phoenix Dawn Command, Gloom, and Illamot, Keith Baker! Keith, thank you so much for coming on the show. I am so glad to be here. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Keith and I have been running Celebrity Charity 20 for seven years now, and I couldn't have done it without him. He writes all the adventures, and it's been an, it's been an adventure. It has been an adventure. So, players, they come to the table, and they kind of are casually playing. How do you get them to buy into the theme or the story? It is one of the hardest things because, as you were saying earlier, at the base, characters are a set of numbers. And how do you get the players to think beyond that? How do you get the person to not simply think, I'm an elf fighter, but what does that mean? How did I come to be a fighter? Why did I choose that path? One of the things that you talked about earlier with the idea of sort of choosing a leader, uh, that's certainly a kind of concept you can go with. And to me, the whole trick with that is just making sure the players are interested in the idea. I don't want to build up this huge story as if I'm making a movie and then bring the players in to be part of it and have them all say, I wouldn't watch this movie. This, yeah. isn't, this isn't something I want to be part of. Yeah. So whether it's a war story, whether it's a spy adventure, you want to start by just talking to your players and saying, what do you think? We're all going to be a group of spies doing spy stuff. What do you guys think about that? So what are different ways to do that? Because just saying, I want you to be a part of this, that doesn't get them in. What do no, you do to no, absolutely. get them in? So you want to definitely sort of describe the whole sort of idea. So again, I don't just say, you want to do a war story. I want to say, all right, here's the idea. We're coming out of this big civil war. Uh, the four of you served in the war together, your unit of soldiers, and then your side lost the war. And now you're adventurers with no home trying to find something to do. And hopefully the players say, that sounds great. I'd be the captain and you know, he would have been the, uh, the mechanic and you know, you go from there. Or they might say, Meh. and then you come up with another idea. In an ongoing campaign, you've got some time 
for the players to really grow into their characters. And so one of the things I do there is I use questionnaires. Uh, as you've seen when we do the Charity 20 game, everybody has a little questionnaire. And so if I say, you're a bunch of former soldiers who were all in the same prisoner of war camp, and you broke out, and now you're trying to track down the commandant who tortured you all. I'm going to, on the questionnaires, have questions like, what is the worst thing that happened to you at the camp? You know, how did you break out? What was your part in the plan? And who did you have to leave behind? Oh, yeah. Uh, because the whole point is you want the players to not just think of this as an arbitrary, oh, he's a bad guy, he did bad things. You want them to stop and think about what would matter to me? What is the worst thing I can think about? Yeah, um, what I really liked about your questionnaire is not only did it ask questions to the player about their own individual story, but it actually got them to care about each other. Right. So I think that's something that a lot of people leave out, is how do you, how do you connect the dots? So one I like in one of the Charity 20 games we've done, which is called Penance, uh, it's sort of the breakfast club turns into a zombie <laughs> apocalypse. But one of the characters, the cleric, has the question, just before you're going off on this adventure, uh, you had a fight with your younger sister. What was it about? And then one of the other characters, the, the kid, has your best friends with the cleric's sister, and she asked you to do something. You know, like, uh -huh. Patrick, what was it? And the point of this is it's not just me telling you your character has a sister. It's again getting you to stop and think, what would I fight with a sister about? You know, what could have happened? And then later in the game where the sister shows up and she's been bitten by a zombie yeah. and there's no way to save her and you have to decide if you're chopping her head off, you're actually like, oh, but dang it. We did that stupid fight about, you know, sweaters. If only I and could now, say this one thing. If only I could thing. do this one thing. <laughs> and again, the, you know, the kid has thought about it. No, oh, this is my friend. And all that, again, makes that story, even though they don't know these characters, this is just three hours we're together. When that moment happens, it's always this amazing, you know, tragic moment. And that's where really drawing the players in and having them make the story as well. It's not just my story. The, the you know my favorite thing about role playing is we get to do this together. Yes, absolutely. So when you're coming up with these questions for the questionnaires, is there a formula that you go by? There's not a specific formula. It depends. Like again, in one shots, it's very much about what is the subject. So in that zombie game we talked about, again, one of the questions you know it's about the sister because I know she's going to get in trouble later. One of the questions in that one is I established from the start that this town has a cat cafe, essentially a tavern that's filled with cats, the crooked cat. Yeah. And everybody I ask, who's your favorite cat? <laughs> and everybody can just come up with a cat. I like Crookshanks, the you know. And then, of course, it's a zombie cat who bites the sister and such, and it's one of their favorite cats. Looking to something like Phoenix, the questions are broader, and the point is more, I know this is a war story, so I want you to get in that mindset and to talk about why you fought, what you're fighting for, what, you, you know, what have you lost and what do you still have to lose. And again, it's all about the questions helping the player sort of get a picture of what is the story that we're going to tell. In our pre-interview, we talked about uh, stories that drive characters to work together. Well, one of the things is, so this sort of questionnaire, and just as we started off saying the idea of, I'm gonna tell you the story, this is a war story, this is a spy story, that's one way to do things, and that's great if you have a group of people working together, but it's possible that either you don't have time, you don't want to do that, or maybe you don't have everyone in the same place. You know, you don't have an easy way to do that. So if you're not pre-building the theme, what I really like to do is to try and make sure that the story naturally drives the players to work together, that it doesn't feel like the only reason we're pretending our characters are friends because we're sitting at this yeah. table. So one story uh, I really like that I ran a couple times in Eberron following that idea was basically starting everybody. They've all got their own backstories. They're all going to Stormreach, the distant uh, city, for various reasons of their own. So they've all built their characters up individually. They're on an airship going across the ocean to get there, and then the airship gets hijacked. This is Die Hard on an airship. Yeah. Ooh, people are seizing <laughs> control. And now the point is, 
the players are the only people that have the skills to do something about this. Yeah. So I'm not saying you have to do this together. I'm saying this is a logical situation where you've got to do something. Well, looks like you better work together. Yeah. They save the airship, but it's already been steered off course and it passes through a Bermuda Triangle effect and now it cr it's crashing. And so now here's the next exciting thing. You're on a plane and it's crashing. What do you do? Oh, that's so exciting. And suddenly it's the, <laughs> well, I don't have a skill for this. Oh my goodness, what do I do? Uh, and then it crashes and now we're into Lost and now we're saying, okay, you're in this mysterious place. Uh, under these circumstances, you know you basically have, there's like a dimensional portal, but you've got six days to figure out how to get to it, how to get out of it. You have limited resources, you have innocent people who survived but don't have the skills to do anything, and again, you the players are the only people with the skills to handle this. So now, if they were in a city, they might say, well, I'd go off and find someone else. I do. You don't have anyone else. And so in that particular scenario, that's like the next two adventures are essentially what do you do when you're dropped on a desert island with these people, it's filled with nasty things, and you have <laughs> six days to find a way out. I want to play this game right now. And, <laughs> and so the point is, by the time they do, and then now they're in Stormreach, and now they all have their individual things, but you know, they could really use help on those. And well, those five other guys who helped me through, you know, Lamania, I could really use their help. It's a life-changing event. Exactly. And that's exactly as you described of you can do it as the let's talk about the three years of life-changing events that you had, or you can just set it up so the adventure really is a life-changing event. What does your pre-game table explanation look like? For me, that's definitely something that varies dramatically based on the game I'm running. You know, Phoenix, again, I'm going to be talking about why you're here, why you're a team, what this means to you. Whereas, again, if I'm running something like Over the Edge, it'll be much more casual. I generally just like to say the biggest thing to me is saying this is about making a story together. Uh, if you don't understand the rules at all, just tell me what you want to do and I'll help you figure out how your character can do that. What is your favorite GM moment? And I know you've had a lot of it them. Is, <laughs> it is so hard to say uh, just because there's so many. One that just really sticks with me was actually from late high school, I think. And I was running a sort of cyberpunk horror scenario. Nice. And in this particular moment, uh, the players are, you know, the sort of people trying to protect uh, the cities. They've discovered that there's a sort of thing like The Thing, uh, where it's, you know, alien shapeshifter that eats people and spits out copies. <laughs> and this city has been infected with it. They don't know how many, they don't know how far, but they've got this shuttle that has nuclear missiles. And they are floating over the city arguing about, <laughs> do we nuke this city? Because it is the only way we can be sure. And one of the players is like, you cannot be serious. You know, there's 500,000 people in this city. You can't possibly, and the other guy's like, we have no way. We've got to stop this you here. You gotta save the world. And they're just arguing, and finally one of the players just does that. And you know, uh, and they nuke the city. <laughs> and of course, the sad part was they had one of the aliens on the ship with them. So oh, they no! did it all for nothing. <laughs> but it was just the fact that in that moment, they weren't thinking about numbers. They weren't thinking about characters. They were just totally like, what if you had to make that choice? What would you do? It was real to them. It's, yeah. It feels real yeah. to me right now. I don't want to make that decision. <laughs> mm -hmm. One GM tip, a quick tip to the audience. My uh, thing is I really like to ask the players questions, to draw them into the description and the world. Uh, say, for example, you're running into a mob of zombies. I might tell you some details. All right, there's an old man who's dragging himself along in a broken leg. Uh, there's a little girl who's got this bloody teddy bear that she's still clinging to. But then I'm going to say to each of the players, you tell me about one of the zombies that catches your eye, one that stands out. And the point is, as I'm describing the fight, I'm going to talk about those particular zombies and you know how that plays into things. And the point is it really makes the players visualize it in their head and actually really think of this as a scene rather than as a faceless generic mob of numbers that they're fighting. Thank you so much for joining us today. This has been just amazing. I am so happy to have you on here. I'm so excited. You can find Keith on Twitter at HellCowKeith and at www.keith-baker.com.
And yeah, that's our show. See you next time on GM Tips. And as usual, you can find me every Sunday from 12 to 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on twitch.tv slash Maze Arcana. Keith, if you would please GM us out of here. Very well. It's been a long day, interviews, talking to people, changing the world of gaming. You're a little tired. But as you look out over the studio, you notice something. The camera guy, something's different about him. What is it? His shirt's on Inside Out. His shirt is on Inside, you're sure? And that wasn't that way just 15 minutes ago. Your eyes meet and he realizes you know, and he jumps up and that's where we're gonna stop.